everyone and welcome to Grow Your Wealth, a series brought to you by BQ Prime and powered by Grow, the investing platform that's fast, easy and convenient. As financial markets capture the imagination of more and more Indians who seek to look beyond the usual fixed deposits and mutual funds and want to directly invest and grow their wealth, this series seeks to demystify fundamental and technical analysis which can help investors take informed investment decisions. They help investors take calls on whether to buy, hold, or sell an asset in the stock market. In today's discussion on fundamental analysis, we'll be discussing the top five investing strategies that you must deploy. To talk about that, we have with us Avinash Gorakshekar. He is a finance professional covering fundamental research and has enjoyed extensive work experience of 30 years within the Indian financial services sector, having started his career in 1992. He currently is the head of research at Profit Mart Securities. Avinash, thank you so much for joining in. Yeah, thank you, Mobina. Well, to start with, tell us, Avinash, a bit about the investing strategies that you deploy when building a portfolio. Yeah, Mobina, I think uh, when I look at constructing a portfolio, I look at two, three parameters. One is, uh, you know, I follow a growth strategy, I follow a value strategy, and I follow a turnaround strategy. You know, when I mean turnarounds, I look at companies which are just started making uh, profitability after a long period of losses. So basically, uh, let me explain to you what do we mean by growth strategies. Now, when we talk about growth strategies in your portfolio, it means that uh, you know, you're willing to pay a reasonable premium, uh, you know, for these companies in terms of their valuations, because the kind of growth opportunities these companies are going to grow over the next, say, three to five years is going to be extremely solid and significant. And therefore, markets also reward such companies with very strong, uh, you know, valuations. Just to give you a simple example, you know, companies from the QSR space uh, trade at an average P multiple of at least 50 to 60 times, considering the fact that this is a sector which is going to grow exponentially over the next, say, five to 10 years. So obviously, markets are factoring in a higher growth for these companies. And therefore, these are typical you know, examples of growth stocks. Now, another example of the value investing strategy is to, is to look at companies you know, who are generating steady earnings numbers, which have got very good business models and which are available at very attractive valuations, you know, which are non-glamorous businesses, non-fashionable businesses, but where the business model is extremely robust. A classic example is of ITC. Uh, about a year back, you know, this stock used to trade at around 180 odd rupees. Uh, today, it has almost doubled. So basically, ITC was a value stock, which was offering a very strong kind of a business model, a very good, uh, you know, free cash flow in the business, an ROE of almost 25%. But unfortunately, it was not considered to be a growth stock for a long time. The moment the market understood its business model and the kind of uh, opportunity this company could present to investors, it became a growth stock. So value and growth is very closely interrelated. So I think uh, these are the two things which I always look in companies. At least 70% of my portfolio is in growth stocks, which gives me a better alpha over the next say three to four years. And uh, about 20% you know, comes from basically the value stocks, which give me a good opportunity to cherry pick stocks at lower levels. And the third category, Bubina, I would like to uh, tell all the investors here that I look at companies which are at the start of a, a big growth phase after a you know, long period of losses. So these are basically turnaround companies, companies which have been in losses for the last five to six years. But some sector change, some management change or something has happened in the company which has made these companies now look attractive. And these could be either because of a demerger or because of a merger into a profitable company or a special situation arising into the company. So basically, there are many uh, factors which drive you know, investors into such companies when the past has not been good, but the future is bright. So basically, when you talk about investing strategy, these are the three investing strategies which I uh, deploy. And I ensure that I'm present in all the three pockets because the markets always looks at opportunities across sectors and across companies. So this could be a better way to say that you know I'm more of a diversified investor. But at the same time, I am able to capture the alpha in almost all the segments of the market, whether it is large cap, mid cap or small cap. Now, different investment products require different strategies. So having said that, Avinash, what's the strategy you deploy or rather how different is it, um, you know, when you are using or rather investing in equities and debt? See, I think as I mentioned to you, equity is a long term asset class where, uh, you know, compounding happens over the next, say, five to ten years. 
initially the compounding is not visible but once uh, the neck the you know the, a couple of years happen and i think you start getting a reasonable upside to your portfolio then the compounding magic happens so that is the biggest plus point of equity unlike debt you know where the coupon rate is maximum peg to let's say a fixed rate of say 7% 8% equities offer unlimited returns the only caveat for equities is that equities come with a reasonably amount of high risk as compared to debt but today we are living in a era of high inflation high cost plus inflation so obviously uh, you know putting your money in equity makes logical sense on the other hand you know as i mentioned to you that when i look at debt mutual funds i look at what is the age profile and what is the investment appetite of a particular investor uh, there are investors who are more than 40 50 years but still their investment appetite is extremely favored towards equities but somebody who is a conservative steady investor who does not like market volatility can obviously play the equity route by you know doing a little bit of passive investments by investing in good dividend yield stocks uh, the reason why i am telling you is that we have found lot of public sector well managed companies private sector companies announcing hefty dividends for their shareholders and a dividend is a very important concept in the investment process obviously dividends are actual cash payouts therefore you know they are very important for a investor so typically one can construct a portfolio of good dividend yield companies for the next say 5 to 10 years because uh, typically you know once uh, the age of an investor increases his risk profile obviously undergoes a change but if he can create a passive income by these dividend uh, yield companies that could obviously result in a reasonably good cash flow for him going forward so basically when you look at equity and debt you know you need to look at first what is the investment appetite what is the kind of risk profile the investor is willing to take but or on a very broader basis i think investors should take at least 60% exposure to equity and 40% to debt and obviously within that 40% they could also look at passive investment which i mentioned to you so this could be an ideal asset allocation portfolio for somebody who is between the age of let's say 35 to 50 years for uh, you know people who are below 30 years i think equity as a investment class has to be the most important you know asset class in their portfolios so different investment products require different strategies avinash i'm sure you'll understand or rather appreciate when i say that different time horizons as well would require different strategies i reckon because say for example uh, the strategy that you had back in march 2020 when covid had just hit would be vastly different from the strategy you deploy today the market is dynamic so could you tell us how one must also change their strategy depending on market conditions yeah mobina i think very interesting question uh, what is important is that you know when covid happened uh, there was complete panic in the markets and i think we saw not only the penny stocks but even well established companies beaten down significantly so you know this was like a lifetime opportunity for investors to buy quality stocks quality businesses at very low you know kind of prices but i think as uh, things stand you know these opportunities don't come every now and then and obviously markets bounce back quite quickly and now in the current scenario mobina i think what is important is that investors should realize that they have to you know obviously look at what kind of alpha can be generated from new sectors which are operating in the market uh, it could be cement it could be steel or it could be you know maybe even the it sector uh, one has to keep a very close watch on the sectoral trends which are prevailing in the sectors and obviously you know zero down on then companies which are primarily the main uh, players within that uh, industry segment so uh, going back to research i think we do a lot of sectoral analysis and we do a lot of quarterly trend analysis which helps us make uh, you know catch the trend in any sector happening very early in the in the move because obviously early uh, uh, you know spotting of the trend is obviously going to benefit you in terms of the alpha generation going forward so i think when you said you know the strategy being different in different markets is definitely a very valid point uh, in today's markets or in any market you have to be flexible and you have to change your market strategy based on the data points presented by any sector or any company uh, but most importantly i think you need to monitor this on a regular basis i think investors who obviously uh, read a lot and who have a kind of access to all data points which the company provides should obviously make uh, full use of these sectoral trends because you know it doesn't happen that one sector runs for 3 years 5 years there are sector trends which are extremely strong uh, you know one sector trend may last for just about 6 months or maybe a year and after that you know the entire sector goes through a downturn so you need to monitor these sectoral trends depending on how the market has uh, you know improved how the markets have actually you know uh, you know welcome them but most importantly uh, you need to be flexible you cannot afford to be rigid because in the markets uh, whenever you are rigid and whenever you are non complacent i think uh, obviously the opportunity to make a alpha definitely gets reduced significantly so i think in a nutshell uh, what i would like to say is that uh, if you want to remain in the markets you got to be nimble footed 
you got to be extremely focused on what sectoral trends are prevailing and based on the earnings expectations and based on the data points put, produced by these companies i think then obviously one has to take a reasonable call on your asset allocation for the sector which you think should outperform over the next 12 to 15 months so this is a, a ground level kind of approach which i have been following and i think to a large extent it has been successful all right well all those who are starting off their investment journey and are wondering what kind of strategies you should deploy here are some shared by Abhinash or Akshaykar. Thank you so much for joining in today. Thank you. And folks, with that, we're at the end of yet another episode of Grow Your Wealth. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for many more such informative videos.